in this healing shots i am going to tell you about celiac disease which is also known as celiac sprue it is a non infective malabsorption syndrome autoimmune disorder in pediatric age group males are commonly affected and in adult age group females are commonly affected it is an immune mediated diarrheal disorder or malabsorption syndrome where the culprit is gliadin protein where it will be present in the cereals what are those cereals it is remembered by the mnemonic called bro right barley rye oats and wheat right so barley rye oats and wheat are the culprit where you will be finding gliadin protein causing all the problem so what is the pathogenesis gliadin which is present in the cereals they will be acting by two mechanism one is called direct method second is called indirect method direct method they will stimulate activation of interleukin 15 which will be increased expression on the mucosal epithelial cell and second thing they will induce more proliferation and differentiation of cytotoxic cd8 t cells so increased interleukin 15 increased cd8 t cells what they will do they will cause enterocyte damage by what method by apoptosis right so this is direct method in indirect method what happens gliadin which is present in the cereals it will be deamidated by enzyme called transglutaminase so transglutaminase will deamidate them into the deamidated gliadin and that will be working like an antigen right so this antigen is now getting i uh, know presented to the th1 cell right cd4 helper t cell 1 by which of the hla molecule so remember hla dq28 which is the hla marker for celiac disease also so please remember hla dq28 so this will be presenting antigen and now cd4 t cell is activated cytokine will be released and now this cytokine is going to cause enterocyte damage so this is the two method direct method by il15 and cd8 indirect method is by cd4 t cells with their cytokine causing enterocyte damage when we uh, think about diagnosis we use multi modality approach so clinical finding uh, there will be a history of the gluten sensitive cereals so when you will deprive them it will improve and when he will take that 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 condition will worsen so this is the clinical point of view then endoscopic biopsy which i will discuss later on right and then serology on serology two important thing we have to remember most sensitive is the iga antibody against which enzyme transglutaminase iga against transglutaminase is the most sensitive and most specific is anti endomycial antibody which will be iga or igg type of antibody on biopsy what we are going to see so when we will do the endoscopic biopsy what we are going to see see this is the normal villi right we can see this is the normal villi and there is a crypt but in this celiac disease patient now you can see villi is totally atrophic so there is a atrophic villi but remember the amount of atrophy we are seeing in the mucosa same amount of the cryptic hyperplasia is seen same amount of the cryptic hyperplasia is seen so because of this two combination atrophy of the villi and cryptic hyperplasia both are seen so overall you can see the thickness of the mucosa is same right so this is very very important overall mucosal thickness will remain same in celiac disease right now in this what we are seeing this is the mucosal epithelial cell where you can see tiny lymphocytic infiltrates are infiltrating so this is uh, on on high power view you can see these are the lymphocytes and these are the epithelial cells so lympho epithelial lesion this is called as see lymphocytes are infiltrating epithelial cell so this is called as lympho epithelial cell what will be the what will be the prediction why we should know about it because this creates increased risk for the non hodgkins lymphoma which non hodgkins lymphoma b cell or t cell answer will be t cell what is the name enteropathy associated t cell non hodgkins lymphoma so this is all about celiac disease enjoy learning best wishes